Hello everyone, this is Shadi Reyes from Sky 2022. With me is Dr. Odaime Kasara. She is cardiologist at the Christ Hospital. And at Sky 2022, she presents a later breaker looking at uh, six differences in outcome in patients presenting with COVID-19 and STEMI. Dr. Kasara, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Can you please uh, go over the, what's the idea, how triggered, what triggered the idea and what the main findings? Yeah, so the idea was we know that there are sex differences in clinical outcomes in between men and women. And what we wanted to determine is do we see the same in these COVID-19 STEMI patients? And therefore, we did this analysis where we really looked at sex differences in clinical characteristics, presentation, um, actually angiographic results, and then outcomes between men and women. So um, it's an important question regardless of COVID, but tell us what, we f- what you found in COVID as well. Yeah, it was very interesting. So what we found in COVID was some of the things that we've seen in non-COVID times. Number one, women were older and had more risk factors that we know from prior data. We also um, saw that women presented less likely with chest pain, more with shortness of breath. And then what was the most interesting finding was actually that when we looked at the angiographic results, what we found is that more women had no culprit lesion identified on angiography, a third of the women compared to a fifth of the men. So the the rates, the percentage of non-culprit lesions was much higher in this cohort of COVID-19 and STEMI than you know pre, pre-COVID times. But we also saw a very significant sex difference, which was of a lot of interest. And then the actual outcomes, the in-hospital mortality was similar between the two sexes, but we think the power, we didn't have the power to really detect a sex difference in mortality with the, the cohort of more than 500 patients. So this want to dive deep into the one-fifth of women that has no angiographic obstruction mm-hmm. but yet these patients had elevation troponin I'm assuming that's Correct. why they were taken to the cath lab so what is the mechanism then yeah so we are currently undergoing core lab of the angiography and the EKGs to really um, dive deeply into the answer to that question but we believe that it's likely um, probably thromboembolism given that we know COVID is a pro-thrombotic state that's our hypothesis but until we complete the core lab we really won't have the real answer for you yeah. maybe a micro microvascular disease Absolutely. minoca or something like that. yes we believe that a lot of those uh, patients with no culprit lesion identified are minoca um, but we'll get confirmation once we do the core lab analysis so now um, I know COVID is a kind of luckily going away so but you have a patient similarly would you recommend being aggressive and antiplatelet in these cohort patients yeah so um, I think what's most important especially now that you know with with vaccination patients are coming in less sick is we do need to one really identify the cause of that minoca I think that was important pre-covid times and I think with these rates being much higher it becomes even more relevant so these patients we should really be thinking about OCT at the time of cath right to really identify the cause of that um, MI and two a cardiac MRI. I think we've shown that with multimodality imaging in both STEMI and NSTEMI we really get to the diagnosis of MINOCA and I think that's critical at this point especially we're going to see the rates going up the way we saw it in this registry. Absolutely great findings thanks for the science you presented congratulations for the late breaker. Thank you. Uh, Please watch these videos and others on Sky TV this is Shadrish from Sky and Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you.